Hi everybody, this is Burke Holland and welcome to HTML5 development for ASP.NET developers. This series of screencasts will focus on doing HTML5 development when you are working with some layer of abstraction that sits between the server and the actual CSS JavaScript and HTML that comprise the web. All of the demos here will be done in Visual Studio and we'll have a focus on web forms and MVC to a slightly lesser degree. And as I broke out this series of screencasts, I thought that the best place for us to start would be with a module that I called Hello jQuery. Since I'll be using a lot of jQuery as we move into building interfaces with Kendo UI, I thought we could get a really good understanding of the fundamentals of jQuery and, and how it fits in with web forms and MVC. This is a very basic module. If you're comfortable with jQuery, then you may want to skip this one and go ahead and move on. If jQuery is new to you, then this is a great place to start and get comfortable with it. All right, let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and jump over here to Visual Studio. And I've done File, New Project, and I've created a new ASP.NET Web Forms application. This is very plain Jane. There's nothing special about it. In fact, if we look at the solution, I didn't even change the default name. I just left it the same. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of this default content that we get. And in this main content area here, I want to add a couple of controls. So let's put a text box. Let's put two text boxes. And I'm going to put a button. I'm going to add a label as well. And I'm going to create a very simple application where somebody puts in their first name and then their last name. And then they get a specialized greeting from the server. So we'll space this out some and put the label on the next line. Let's go ahead and hide this and let's customize these controls just a little bit here. All right, we'll make this the txt, um, this text box, we'll make this text box txt first name here. And we will make the second text box here txt last name. And I will call the button btn say hello. And we will change the text to say hello. So change the ID there and the text here, say hello. And then on the result label, I want to go ahead and remove the default text because I don't want it to show anything. And then I'm going to change it to LBL result. All right, very simple. I'm going to double click on this say hello button. And in this event that's created for us, that's now wired up to the button, we'll set the text property of the label to be equal to hello, and then the first name, and its text property, plus a space, and the last name. So this is really simple, very basic stuff, um, but gives us a functioning application. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And when it comes up here, I should be able to put in my first name and my last name, and uh, we'll get a greeting from the server. And there we go. Works great. But I want to stop here for just a second and talk about what's actually happening when we click this button. And so I'm going to open up the developer tools. Um, these are called the F12 developer tools in Internet Explorer. They're called that because you press F12 to open them. So I'm going to go ahead and press F12. And here's my developer tools. And I, we have these tabs here on this network tab. I'm going to go ahead and start capturing. I'm going to go ahead and reload this page here. And I want to look at some of the network traffic. You'll see that we did three gets, or the browser did. It, it got the site, and then it got this uh, CSS file, which was referenced in the head of the site, and this web resource file, which is used by web forms. If I put in my first name and my last name, and I click this button, you'll notice this changes just slightly this change to a post and what happened was the page actually posts back to the same location or to itself in ASP.NET and the server modifies the HTML and then sends it back to the browser if we look at this specific request and we look at the request body and we can see that the view state object if I scroll all the way down to the end contains my name that I entered into the text boxes if we go back and we look at the response body, of course, the server has now modified the HTML and sent it back to the client so that it now says hello Burke Holland here. And that label has been turned into a span element. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can start using jQuery and completely cut out the round trip to the server. If we take a look at our project, we'll go ahead and stop the server and have a look. We can see in the scripts folder that jQuery is actually already here. 
Now, your version may be uh, an older version of jQuery, 1.4.1 possibly, but you can update this by using a NuGet package. Here, I'm going to go ahead and add in jQuery, and all I need to do to do that is to drag out this jQuery file here and drop it in the page. And you can see that we have three files. We have the full jQuery source, and then we have the minified jQuery source, which essentially removes all white space and comments and compresses variable names down to single characters if it can. It's kind of an obfuscation of code, but also a way to make the file much smaller. And then we have the VS doc file, which gives us IntelliSense. And as long as the VS doc file and the jQuery file have a similar naming convention, meaning they're named the same all the way up until this point here, then them being in the same folder is enough for web forms to give us IntelliSense support, which is really nice. So let's go ahead and run this application. And we've added jQuery support. And we have our developer tools open. And I'm going to go ahead and populate this first name box with my first name. If I jump over here to the console, I can actually execute arbitrary JavaScript commands here. So I could say actually alert hello, and it will give me a message. And because I can do that, I can execute jQuery here as well. And jQuery you may be familiar with. If, you, if you're not familiar with it at all, you may at least know that everything in jQuery kind of begins with a dollar sign. And the dollar sign is just shorthand for jQuery. So we could type jQuery or we could type dollar sign, which is a lot easier. Now jQuery does a lot of things, but one of the most important things that it does and something that's very applicable to what we're doing today is it allows you to select things out of the page or select elements out of uh, what's commonly referred to as the DOM, which is just the page. Um, so the way that it does that is it has these things called selectors. Um, it has a lot of selectors. Two that you should be very familiar with are the ID selector and the class selector. ID selectors begin with a pound and class selectors begin with a period. So with our first name text box here, because we gave it an ID of txt first name, we should be able to select it by that ID here with jQuery. So if I open parentheses and I start with a pound because I'm going to select it by ID and I try to get the first name and I can go ahead and execute this. And what happened was um, we got the entire jQuery object back. If we look at this again, um, and I just get the value of this text box, I can do that by pressing val. Now when I do that, you'll notice that nothing comes back. And there's a good reason for this. Let's take a look. If I click on this select element here, and I select this element, we can come over and have a look at it. And you'll see that the text box is actually an HTML input, and it has a name, and here's its ID. But you'll notice that even though we set the ID to txt first name, it's actually main content underscore txt first name by the time the server gets done with it. Now, why is that? Well, that's because we added these controls to a content area in ASP.NET Web Forms. And whenever we add controls to a parent container, those controls get prefixed with the name of the parent container. This is not a big deal. It's just something that we need to be aware of as we're doing development. So if I come back over to the console and I modify this just a little bit, we can say uh, main content here, put the underscore, and now when I execute this, you'll notice that we actually get the value of this text box back. And that's all using jQuery. We can do a lot more with it, but for right now, that's what we're trying to do. So let's go ahead and jump back over to our project and refactor it to use completely jQuery. All right, so we're back in our project. And because we are using JavaScript, we actually don't need to stop the project. We can just write our JavaScript. So I'm going to jump over to the default.aspx page. And uh, down here, right before the content closes, I'm going to add a script block like this. And this is a JavaScript block. And I'm going to do something called the document ready function in jQuery. And this just says when all scripts are loaded and all content is loaded into the page, then execute this function. And the shorthand for that is just a dollar sign and then an open function. And then we'll close it like this. And this is shorthand for the document ready function. And then here I'm going to create a first name variable and we will go ahead and get the value of the first name remembering that it starts with main content because it's in the main content container and then we'll do the same thing for the last name 
All right, we've selected our first name and last name out of the DOM, and then we just need to concatenate them together and display them as the value of the label. So I'm going to go ahead and get the label control by its ID. And what I'm going to do is set the HTML property of this element. And the HTML, you can see in the um, IntelliSense here, it either gets the contents or sets the HTML. And since it's a span, it's going to set the contents that are in between the span tags, and that's exactly what we want. So here it's going to be hello, and then a space, and then just pretty much identical to our server code, it's going to be txt first name plus and a space, and txt last name. And we'll go ahead and close this off. I do need to add here that we're going to get the we actually want to get the value of this, not the object itself. It's just like getting the text property off of the object in, uh, when doing it in um, on the server. And that's all we have to do to set the uh, value. One thing we do need to do is get rid of this button. This is a button and it's inside a form, so it's going to trigger uh, what's called a postback or sending the form values to the server, and we don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out and I'm going to replace this with an input. And I'll set its type equal to button and this will give us a button but will not post the form back to the server. And I'll go ahead and give it an ID. Uh, actually it doesn't need an ID. I'll give it a click handler and uh, the way that I'm going to do that is um, I'm going to wire it up down here in the JavaScript and we'll give it a value of uh, say hello. There we go. And uh, let's, let's do in fact give it an ID because we're going to need to select it. So what I'm going to do is down here, I need to have all of this code happen here um, on click of that button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a click handler to the button like this. So I'll go ahead and select it. And because I'm using a straight input element and not a server control here with this button, I don't need to prefix it with main content. I can just get it by its ID like this. And then I give it a click event. And we can see here in the IntelliSense, it says bind the event handler to the click JavaScript event exactly what we want. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say when this click event is fired I want you to execute a function. Now that may look a little weird if you've not passed around functions as if they were variables before but this is completely okay in JavaScript and you will see it all the time. Um, so with inside this function here what I want to do is I want to get all this code here and I'm going to cut it and paste it back inside here. If I save this, and because I don't have to restart the project because we're using JavaScript, and we go back to our page, I can go ahead and refresh. And I can type in my first name and my last name. Thank you, autocomplete. Click Say Hello. And you'll notice that without the page posting back, we get our first name plus our last name back. And we could do all sorts of additional things here, like I could select the uh, label, so it's main content underscore LBL result. And then I could set the CSS class. We could say that the font size is, uh, let's say, uh, five ms big, which will make it huge. That works. And then jQuery has a lot of other things, um, including animations. So we could um, hide it like this and say do it slowly, and it will slowly hide it for us. And we could bring it back in the same way like this, and we'll do it over the span of two seconds, and slowly it will come back. There we go. That has been a very quick primer on how to use jQuery with ASP.NET Web Forms. Um, I would recommend that you follow this up by going to Jeffrey Way over at Tuts Plus and learning uh, 30 days to, to learn jQuery. Go through this course. I went through it. It's fantastic. If you want to know jQuery inside and out and you want to be very proficient and very comfortable, there's no better way to do it. That's all for now. Um, next time we'll talk about services and uh, how to expose your data as JSON or JSON as some people like to say, so that um, your UI can consume it very easily. See you soon.